Hello everyone, welcome to the seventh Lord in your chart. Where is he placed in all the houses? This will tell you about your spouse, about your partner, but actually there are many more secrets to the seventh house Lord. I'll be telling you about these in the video. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. If the video is good for you, give it a thumbs up. Let's begin. Firstly, everybody who are the house lords in Vedic astrology, you should understand that many signs have more than one lord and you will need to check both to understand your destiny from that house. Secondly, we are using sign for a house system where a whole rasi or sign is contained in each house. This is most important. If you should attempt to use an equal house system, it just won't give you the correct result. The Lord of Aries is Mars, of Taurus, it's Venus and the Moon. For Gemini, it's Mercury. For Cancer, the Moon. For Leo, the Sun. And for Virgo, it's Mercury and Rahu. For Libra, the Lord is Venus. For Scorpio, it's Mars and K2. For Sagittarius, Jupiter. For Capricorn, Saturn. For Aquarius, Saturn and Rahu. And for Pisces, Jupiter and K2. Another important understanding is how do you judge the results of any house in your chart? Strongest indication are given by the planets in the house. First and foremost, check the videos on my channel showing you results of planets in houses in your chart. The next most powerful factor are the aspects to the house, especially when there are no planets in the house. Planets aspecting by sign and sight, that planet will give you the result of the house. And finally, it's the Lord of the house, the Bavesha, what I'm discussing in this series, that will give you the result of the house. Don't forget, all three have to be considered equally in this order of importance. But for those who have rarely no planets in the house, nor any aspect, the Bavesha gives you the total story. In this case, then, the Lord of the seventh house is known as the Daresha, the Lord of your partnerships, the Lord of your marriage. But actually, he rules so much more. The seventh house is a door into this incarnation, and it's the door through which we leave as well. Through this, our ascendant manifests itself. And actually, from this seventh house, it's a bit complicated, but we can do it. Or we can find our actual conception chart. See everyone, the sign and the planets in the seventh house say as much about you as they do about other people. This seventh house is a part of who you are, but it's a part of you which you project onto others. So say you've got Taurus rising, it's hard to accept, but you have the manipulative, secretive aspects of Scorpio within you. It's not just coming from other people. If you've got, say, Libra ascendant, it's hard to accept the aggression, the warlike tendencies within yourself also. Certainly, seventh house is not a peaceful house in anybody's chart, no matter what the sign, no matter what the planets, because we have to forego ego. We have to share. We have to listen to others. We have to negotiate, which is why this is linked to the marketplace of life and to business activities. And this is where people misunderstand the seventh house. It's the business contract that is what seventh house is about. It's a negotiation. It's a commitment to people together forming a marriage. You mightn't think of it like that. Oh, it's love, romance. No, no. Love and romance are shown in the fifth house. Marriage as a formal commitment in the seventh house. Of course, these days people have committed relationships, but they are not married. Is that still seventh house and Doratia? It is. But you need to have been together for some time. I would say maybe one year, just as a benchmark. And you need to have a commitment to each other so that other people see you as partners. So whether it's marriage, committed relationship or business relationship, in this seventh house, you have to forego ego a little bit. You have to cooperate and you have to have trust. Where there are secrets, where there are underhand manipulations, everything goes quickly downhill. And the Daresha, the lord of your seventh house, wherever he should be in your chart, is seeking one thing. The Daresha is seeking security. And he is seeking that security through the energies of Venus and Shani. How do we judge if the Daresha in your chart will actually give you that success and security in your marriage or indeed in business? There are three important houses to look at. Find the Daresha placement in your chart, Lord of your seventh, and count four houses away. Fourth from the Doratia shows what gives success in your marriage, what 
gives that security, that happiness and the success in your business. And the seventh house away from your Doresha, wherever he is in your chart, shows what you desire most deeply. The eighth house shows the actual predators or destruction of your marriage or your business. What is most dangerous for those two factors? How to use these readings. First important point, there are two lords for some people of the seventh house, two Doreshas. You must read them equally to understand. Otherwise, you'll be missing important karmas there. Check the beginning of the video to find out which planets are the lord of your seventh house. In addition, please make sure you have your Vedic horoscope. You have the sign for a house system. No Bava Charlotte chart, no unequal system will help you get these karmas. Don't use Western Tropical Zodiac, whatever you do. Please check below to find out how to find your Vedic horoscope. There is a website for that that I posted at the bottom of the description box. When the Daresha, the Lord of your Seventh, has gone into the first house, it's an interesting situation, but it puts the emphasis on you in regard to partnerships. Depends on the nature of this Seventh House Lord. If you have a malefic like Shani Ra, K2, Mars, 7th house law going into this first house, it can be quite difficult because you can become a little bit selfish thinking of your own interests rather than spouse's interests. One thing for sure, partnership marriage is very important to you. You are always looking to have somebody with you. You don't want to be alone. You want a partner in your life. And very often there is always someone new coming into your life as soon as they are needed. And how do you find your partner? Well, generally, you take control of it. Seventh Lord Doresha is in the first house. You go out looking for your spouse, literally, or you do something about it, like, like joining a dating site, one of these sort of things. You take control of the desire to find a partner. Because, as I've just said, Doresha carries energy of Shani going into this first house. You're a hard worker. You work hard at anything, whether it's finding a spouse, running a business, you put your full attention to it. You can, however, be quite demanding of your spouse. It's a passionate position. Rajas is strong. You have a, a really strong desire nature when the seventh lord is in the first house. When you want to be with someone, literally nothing will stop you. You will virtually do or say anything to get the spouse you are desiring. A snazzy business person, definitely seventh lord first house. You're very entrepreneurial, but probably better working for yourself because you find it hard to cooperate and there can be business issues with a partner. Now, what keeps your relationship going when the seventh lord is in this first house? It's the fourth house away, the home itself, living together, being together, sharing the same background, maybe coming from a similar area, country, land, whatever it is, but building a home together, living together is the foremost, most important thing. So not being together much in the home, not spending a lot of time together in the home, long distance relationships, traveling together is not always helpful when the seventh Lord is in the first house. And what's your biggest desire? Well, your biggest desire is a seventh house away from the Doresha, which comes back to the seventh house. But what do you really want from this seventh house? You want somebody there for you. You want the support of the partner coming to yourself. Because really, it can be a little bit selfish when the seventh Lord's in the first house. It's about you. It's about your enjoyment, your security. And when it is, though, a benefic planet, like let's say Venus, Moon, Jupiter, Mercury, seventh house Lord, Doresha going here, that can probably calm it down, make it more cooperative. But there is still that, let's say, playful tendency, to put it mildly, Seventh Lord, first house, you can be a little bit manipulative with your spouse. You can even be, let's say, not very nice to your spouse sometimes, playing games. These sort of, these sort of things are not unusual. But of course, these mind games, if you like, won't help any relationship. Where is the actual threat to the relationship? In this case, it's coming from the eighth house away, which happens to be the eighth house itself. Now, the eighth house is about shared resources, having a joint bank account, all of those things, tax matters, inheritance, legacies, even buying a house together if it is mortgaged, let's say. So this can be very difficult indeed to negotiate when the seventh lord is in the first house. 
Of course, I've just spoken about the importance of living together, sharing a space together. What does this mean? Well, I've often seen, strangely enough, that people with this seventh Lord first house go to live in their partner's property without even owning it together. Things like that can be seen. So you have to negotiate very carefully all of these financial factors. Sometimes in-laws of either partner can also give a difficult situation to the relationship. So very important then to find sharing and trust because of the eighth house implication here when the seventh Lord is in this first house. If you do not have trust, real sharing and, and openness, the relationship can disintegrate very, very quickly. And the eighth house is about crisis and diseases, serious illness. Very often, seventh Lord, first house partner or yourself have a big crisis together which can threaten the relationship or some illness comes, something like that. Now, when the Doratia, the seventh house Lord, has gone eight houses away into the second house, you can have a lot of relationships, some might say too many relationships, or you are just always procrastinating, finding it hard to settle on who is the best spouse for yourself. But generally, when this seventh house Lord Doratia is well placed by sign in this second house, well aspected, not too much afflicted, much gain, much monetary enjoyment can be there and financial security through the marriage. It's a very sensual place actually for the seventh house Lord to be. You can have a very strong sex nature, very strong desire nature and sensual pleasures in general of all sorts, including eating, are very much a part of your life. But you find your spouse when Doratia is in this second house or doing the second house activities, eating, being in a restaurant, place where food has been served or working in such a place may be definitely in the family circle, direct family circle sometimes also. Where did you live when you were a child? That early environment also, that exact place, may be the place where you meet a potential partner. Certainly want a shared financial factor with the spouse. A deep connection which is financially secure is important to you. You don't want to be in any relationship where there is financial security on the horizon. That frightens you terribly. Well, it might frighten many people, but for you, it's really important. Why? Because your deepest desire is in the eighth house. And because your deepest desire is connected to the eighth house, you often find yourself connected to these crisis situations, either working in them, finding a spouse who works in them, also like doctor, nurse, somebody who is counsellor, psychotherapist, astrologer even, dealing with people going through crisis. Now what protects a marriage when the seventh Lord is in the second house? It's the fourth house away, the fifth house in this case. So creative endeavours together, hobbies together, sharing these or indeed education, learning, knowledge together, being together in a learning situation. This will all protect the relationship. And of course, fifth house is a house of children, so definitely having children together in this instant is definitely going to help protect the relationship. What threatens the marriage? Where do the predators come in? They come in in foreign lands, going into foreign lands and in higher education. Now, what does this mean? I've just said education is good. Yes, together. When you are separated, though, going into education, sometimes threatening situations may occur. So it's about sharing, learning together, not being separate. Sometimes gurus, teachers, mentors can have a negative impact on the relationship. Sometimes even that might be seen. Of course, ninth house is a house of father. So father himself of either partner has to be brought on board, has to be supporting the relationship. There, there shouldn't be any disagreement or disharmony with either father. Finally, growing together materially, creating wealth together is very important in this relationship. You have to have that sense of material growth. That author factor has to be there. And if it's not there, the whole relationship cannot sustain. That's why it's actually a very, very, very good business placement. Seventh Lord, second house is absolutely superb for business growth. Now, when the seventh law goes into the third house, it can be a little bit tricky. This is a house whose karaka is Mars. It's a very competitive, challenging house. Not always the best thing for intimate relationships. One thing can be seen is that relationship with children or children in your life can have some issues. 
In particular, Parashara talks about relationship with your sons as being challenging, difficult situations developing rather than with your female children. But once again, you must check the fifth house lord, ninth house lord if you are female and the D7 chart. But however, on a deeper level, because this is the ninth house away from the seventh house, there is a deep, karmic, spiritual bond between you and your partner. Sometimes you meet potential spouse when you are traveling or simply when you are studying together because ninth house is higher education. When you are studying spiritual factors, even mundane higher education like university or when you are with a guru, teacher, mentor, these are all environments to find your spouse. Fact is really important important for this relationship that you share a deep spiritual sameness. In other words, you have the same philosophy, same moral values, same religious system together because this is what will bond you together. If you do not, misunderstandings, quarrels, contentions can potentially come around. What factors protect the relationship? As I've told you, it's the fourth house away. In this case, it's the sixth house. So servants, people who serve you in your home or in your workplace, subordinates, they support the relationship. They protect the reputation of your relationship. And actually pets, having pets together brings you closer together. Now, the sixth house is about fitness and health. It's a very purifying house. So keeping fit together, going to the gym together, going for walks together, all of these things secure the relationship. In fact, you may even meet a potential spouse while you are doing these fitness activities. I've actually seen that occur. And this third lord in the, sorry, seventh lord in the third house meets a spouse also through younger siblings because this is a house of younger siblings. When you are traveling, even in foreign lands, potentially a spouse comes into your life. What's your deepest desire when the seventh lord is in the third house? It's for philosophical understanding, for deep philosophical religious dharmic wisdom. You want to be dharmic. Ultimately, you want to do the right thing, no matter how things turn out. That is your desire. And your deep desire is for higher learning of every sort, including mundane education. What threatens the marriage? What threatens the partnership when the seventh lord is third house? It's eight houses away. It's the tenth house. It's the work and the career. Basically, best advice is when you have seventh lord, third house, don't bring your marriage into the workplace. Might even be one of those situations where you don't even tell your colleagues that you are married. Of course, that is always not possible. The most important thing is not to talk about your spouse when you are in your career area working. Don't bring spouse into your career. That could threaten the relationship that could cause harmful situations. In fact, with this placement, it's probably best not to talk about your relationship with anybody in any place at all. Keep it the special thing it is between you because seventh Lord third house is a spiritually blessed relationship. It's a very intimate private thing. Keep it that way. It's a very successful factor for business people because Seventh Lord is in the third house of competition and bartering, negotiation and selling. So a fantastic salesperson could have this position and foreign lands generally can be fortunate for your business. The Seventh Lord, Doresha, has gone into the fourth house, into a Kendra house. Now the fourth house is the home. The spouse has come into the home, has come into your home. What does this mean? It means that the spouse is in some way being controlled by yourself. You're very skilled at controlling spouse and having spouse under your thumb in some way, but it doesn't have to be negative. It also means that you generally get a very obedient spouse, a spouse who, who actually is seeking for that deep security. Why is this happening? It's happening because from the seventh house, it's 10 houses away to the fourth house. 10 houses means authority. So your spouse sees you as, as somebody with authority. They look up to you. Now, this can be a bit strange, you know, male, female dynamics, but that's the reality of the situation. In fact, seventh house lord in this Kendra position makes you a very intelligent together organized sort of person. Very often 
fantastic for business people. And it's no wonder that spouse and indeed other people look up to you in this way. You often have many talents because Seventh Lord is in this fourth house and you can use them in your career. Your deepest desire is seven houses away, tenth house. You want reputation, success and status. So because you have this ambition and this drive, you like a spouse who is similar. You're a very hard worker and you like a spouse who shares this attribute with you. Come work and you meet your spouse very often while you are working. Doesn't matter where you're working, in your home, in your office space, whatever is your work, whatever you are doing in the world, doing that is where you often meet a spouse. Now, what helps a relationship? What maintains it? It four houses away, which is in this case the seventh house. So this is the marketplace of life, the seventh house. So going into business together, I've actually seen this occur, can be excellent to maintain this relationship, as can any bartering, buying, selling, even if it's not official business. Business. And just being out around other people can often be good for this relationship. On the other hand, seventh house is about sharing, it's about trust. So, in this case, you have to have a great deal of trust and sharing in this relationship. Now, some relationships maintain themselves for a very long time with, with actually very little trust between the partners, very little sharing, but that won't happen in this case. This becomes very important in this Doratia placement. Why? Because the threat to the relationship comes from eight houses away. In this case, it's the 11th house. It's the house of network circles, organizations, societies, and your friends. So friendships of either person could actually threaten this relationship. On a different topic, the fourth house has a a special blessing coming from the third away, which is the sixth house. So keeping fit together, eating healthy foods together may be important in your relationship. But actually, when there are malefics in this sixth house, fourth house as well, you may find that you are putting a lot of pressure onto your spouse to be healthy. And this could even even cause some conflict. Uh, when the Doratia seventh lord has gone into the fifth house, it's a real blessing, one of the best placements. But here's the thing. If there are malefics sitting with Doratia, with the seventh lord in this house, it can somewhat reduce that. But generally, it's a very good placement. Now, the fifth house is about love and romance. So when the seventh lord goes into the fifth house, it's a love match marriage, definitely. And you have an enormous love and respect for your spouse. You simply want to make your spouse happy. In fact, Seventh Lord in the Fifth House also gives you many talents, particularly creative talents, music, drama, dance, acting, whatever it is, talent is coming to you from this position. You can meet a potential partner or spouse doing Fifth House activities, being in sporting arenas, sporting events, or just watching sporting events, being in a creative, artistic endeavours, drama, dance, acting, whatever it is. Theatre, anything such as this, you can meet a potential spouse. What protects a marriage itself when the seventh lord is in the fifth house is the eighth house, because that is four houses away. But in this case, it's a very good factor. Now, the eighth house rules crisis, emergency situations. So these situations in life bring you and your spouse closer together, bond you even more strongly. In fact, it is actually said that you would give your life for your spouse. You are that dedicated. Of course, the eighth house is all about joint resources, shared bank account. Definitely, your marriage thrives when you share resources wisely, when you have a joint bank account, when you are open, trusting each other financially completely and sharing all financial agreements. It can save and keep your marriage very strong. And the eighth house is about your in-laws. So either in-laws could help and protect this marriage in some way. And what is your maximum desire when this seventh lord is in the fifth house? It's definitely going towards the eleventh house, the seventh away. You desire to be friends with your spouse. Your spouse must be your most confidential person, your best friend, your best buddy. That is what you do deeply want because friends of all sorts are especially important to you. 
you'd like to share with your spouse membership of humanitarian societies, political societies, larger network circles. This also makes you happy. Now, what can threaten the relationship? What is the danger point? It's the eighth house away. In this case, it's the twelfth house. It means when the twelfth house takes over for either partner in a very negative way, like sleeping too much, becoming lazy, escapist, drug addiction, drink addiction, overindulgence, all of these things can threaten the relationship. Now, the twelfth house is about spiritual pursuits, ashrams, meditation, spiritual realization, even occult study. Is this dangerous? No, not if you do it together. If it's a shared activity, it's excellent. But if it's just one partner only becoming too absorbed in this, this can threaten the relationship. Oh, when the Daresha, the Lord of your seventh house, has gone into the sixth house, it's the first of the three Dustana houses, six, eight, and twelve. These are going to be tricky places, there's no doubt. And in this case, seventh Lord has gone twelfth to himself. Now, first of all, this does not mean that you will not get married. In fact, you are more likely to get married than anything because there are some karmas which have to be worked out in the partnership situation. But clearly, what is seen is that the spouse indicated Daresha has gone into the house of enemy. Does this mean that spouse is your enemy? No, not at all. Spouse is not your enemy, but you can perceive spouse as almost inimical towards yourself. It's a real tendency that you have to become aware of. It's very important to get to know partner before marriage, definitely. But even if you do know them, when you are married, something changes. You seem to see the partner through some dark glass all of a sudden. You're seeing faults where there are really no faults at all. So you have to be very careful about being too judgmental about your partner. And conversely, because this is a house of Mars, the, the celibate warrior, he's the karaka for the house, this is the actual house of celibacy, you should know. So marriage partners gone into the house of celibacy. This means that ultimately you can become more friends than, than anything else. Now, this is not a bad thing. Many marriages go that way. But once again, it's something to be aware of. Of course, it's the house of quarrel and contention and conflict. So without doubt, Seventh Lord, Sixth House, there will be quarrel, contention in the marriage. Once again, every marriage has some level of this, but it becomes a major thing. And it's simply coming because you are seeing the spouse as doing things which you personally do not like. Of course, even sometimes because of these difficult karmas, I've seen people with this seventh Lord Six House take a long time to formally commit to a relationship. But don't worry, there is a way to make this work for you. Very much depends who is seventh house Lord. If seventh house Lord is a tamasic malefic planet such as Shani, Rahu, Mars, it can be very, very challenging because there's a lot of anger and discord going into the relationship. The sixth house is a house of service and here's a redeeming factor. If you can find some service area where both you and your spouse can be creative working there, this can be really helpful. So social work, charity work, volunteer work, where you are giving to the needy in society, even to non-human animals. This is very important in this relationship. You need some cause that you can serve together. Now, where do you meet a potential spouse? Well, when you're either doing those sixth house activities like social work, legal work, voluntary work, or you are in a larger organization like schools, universities, maybe sometimes, or hospitals, even in an ashram, you could meet a potential spouse. Now, what sustains this relationship? Tricky though it can be because the seventh Lord is in this Dustana house. It's the fourth house away, the ninth house. Religion, Dharma, it must be a completely Dharmic relationship. If there is illicit activity, it will completely destroy this whole relationship. So, following guru, religious system, faithfully together will sustain this relationship. And studying higher philosophy together, being in higher education, university together also sustains this relationship. Your father, spouse's father, are very supportive normally also. And what's your greatest desire? Well, it's for spiritual pursuits. You like to be alone. Funnily enough, you like spirituality. You like contemplation. You like peace and quiet. This is one of the reasons why you find marriage so demanding. So you want spiritual 
progress. You like to listen to your own inner voice rather than listening to your spouse. This is why there is some difficulty here. But foreign lands, definitely traveling with your spouse, being there with your spouse can be also helpful. And where is the challenge coming to the relationship? It's coming from the eighth house from the Duratia. It's coming from you. The first house is the eighth house away. So you must not be too perfectionist to the spouse. You must take the spouse with you, not leave the spouse behind. As I said at the beginning of this section, you can be hypercritical, not believing that the spouse is on your side. It's a challenging position generally everyone because you have to see your own faults here carefully. You have to get to know yourself very very well. You have to see what your weaknesses are. Check my video Six Lord All Houses that may help you. Seeing your weakness and and actually overcoming them will strengthen this relationship. And final thing, when you get status, when you come up in the world, somehow that can also threaten the relationship a little bit also. Is it good for business? Well, generally not for a business partnership, definitely too much contention. But if you are serving others in any of those ways I have discussed, non-human beings, legal work, social work, larger institutions, counseling, helping, mentoring people, it can be very successful. When the Doratia, the seventh law, has gone into the seventh house itself, is it good? Yes, it's a big blessing situation, especially when it is a benefic like Venus, Jupiter, Moon, Mercury, even Mercury here. It's a blessing. But when it's malefic, it's still a blessing. If it's Saturn here, Mars, Rahu, Ketu. But the question is, do you accept the blessing when it is malefic? You may not be willing to. You see, generally, seventh lord, seventh house, spouse is a good person. Spouse is supporting you, is a blessing to you. But when there are malefics here, you may not see that clearly. Very often, spouse can have some special position, can have some special karma to perform, can have some prominence in the world. And as they receive their blessings, they share them openly with you. Now, because Doratia is in his own house, in the seventh house, the spouse has to be allowed to do their own thing. You have to have trust in your spouse, not be suspicious, not be jealous. When you let spouse be their, be their own person, that's when the happiness becomes very strong between you. This strong position of Doratia 7th house shows that spouse is a very motivating person. They can motivate you, help you to achieve also in your life. That's why it's so auspicious. Generally, marriage and partnership can be very good for anybody who has 7th Lord 7th house because it really takes your, your life up a step. It gives you a great deal of happiness and prominence when you are married. It's extremely favorable for business people to have the seventh lord in the marketplace house. Marketplace opportunities come to you. You are a real entrepreneur, go-getter if you are in any business. And actually, business partnerships themselves are very favorable, especially if there are good aspects to this seventh house lord. And where do you meet your spouse? Well, in the marketplace of life. So it's very difficult to say where you would when the seventh lord is in seventh house, but you will. It's a destined thing because seventh lord is so strong. Maybe in the marketplace of life, maybe where you are shopping, bartering, buying and selling in a business situation. Anything such as that could be possible. What keeps the relationship going? As I've just said, it's the fourth house away, 10th house. Here, it's about prominence. It's about success. This relationship thrives when you are successful, when the spouse is successful. You're a real team together. You could even go into business together. The desire is focused on yourself in terms of success, prominence, achievement. And definitely because of your hard working attitude, you will succeed and the spouse will become part of this success. But what threatens this relationship? It's a second house because it's eight away from the seventh. So family members don't always support you as much as you would like. They don't always support this relationship and your speech. 
It's most important that you talk together a lot, that you have communication. Watch your speech with your spouse. Words spoken cannot be taken back. But most importantly, keep the lines of communication open. And of course, second house is about resources and wealth. You must be open with your spouse about wealth, not hoarding, not keeping separate accounts from your spouse. It can be difficult because it's not an easy sharing position when it comes to finances. Something is a little bit hidden there. So being open, sharing, not being secretive about financial matters, talking things over together is very important. Now, when a seventh law has gone into the eighth house, Doratia is in the eighth house, it can be challenging. Naturally, it's a Dustana house, just like the sixth, twelfth house, challenging circumstances. And it's the Marika house to the seventh house itself. The most important indication here is that there is a great transformation happening in relationships for you. Going into partnership transforms you from the bottom upwards. It is not easy. There are some deep karmas to be met. Now, the eighth house is a house of crisis. So you can meet a potential spouse when you are going through a major crisis in your life, major turning point. Or you could also potentially meet a spouse in some crisis type work, which you may be undertaking, such as medical work, emergency work, counseling, psychotherapy, where you are helping other people in a crisis situation, you could meet a spouse then. But sometimes with this seventh lord in this eighth house, you are not always attracted to people who are good for you. That's the thing. Sometimes spouse can have their own psychological issues, difficulties. It can be challenging to relate to the spouse when the seventh lord is in the eighth house. In fact, seventh lord, eighth house can give you even psychological problems dealing with people because of early experience. There can be lack of trust, difficulty being vulnerable to other people. You can have have chaotic love affairs or short-term relationships that really are not going anywhere. When you do actually find possible long-term spouse, relationship, marriage, what's going to help sustain it? It's the fourth house away, which is the 11th house. It's your friendship network circle that can help you stay together, actually. So having a good mutual network circle of friends can actually help this relationship. Because this placement makes for a very intense and sometimes challenging relationship. And so when you are socializing together, having friends into your house, going out, socializing, whatever it is, it takes the weight off the relationship and it helps things smooth out. And friends speak well about you to your spouse, vice versa. It can be really helpful. And of course, 11th house is elder sibling. So your elder sibling or your spouse's elder sibling can be very supportive of your relationship. And what do you most desire in the relationship? That's shown by the seventh house away here. It's the second house. You're certainly looking for security and financial security, especially in a relationship. Sometimes seventh lord, eighth house actually means that you simply marry to get that security, to have that financial benefit. And where is the risk coming from in this relationship? Well, it's coming from the eighth house away. It's coming from the communication between you. It can be difficult to be openly communicating easily. You can sometimes feel like you're even walking on eggshells with your spouse with this position. So quarrels, contentions, misunderstandings, all of these challenge your relationship. Another factor is that because the seventh house lord is in the eighth house, it's gone moniker to itself. So spouse can have disease, illness, sickness, and this can be another burden on the relationship. For one thing for sure, it takes a lot of energy to maintain the seventh lord eighth house relationships. And this can take away energy from your from your own career, from your own success sometimes. Avoid any underhand dealings, secret affairs or secret activity. Sometimes spouse can have affairs, you can have affairs. It can get very intense, very challenging indeed. But what about business people? Can it be helpful there? Well, a business relationship can also have difficulties. Business partnerships can also be challenging with this position. 
However, if you are self-employed going into your own business, it can be very, very successful. You can get wealth, success, an amazing marketplace and even stock market opportunities by this placement. But generally then, it's a very challenging position. And just like 7th Lord in the 6th and the 12th, you should check out the remedies at the end of the video. If your Doratia 7th Lord is in the 9th house, we're on to one of the favourable placements again. This is very good because it's in the house of Dharma. It brings blessings to you through marriage. You're a very liberal and open type of person. You are attracted to many people and many people are attracted to you. So you can have quite a few relationships with this position. Generally, you try to maintain a dharmic attitude or righteous attitude in your relationships as much as you can. You have to see who the seventh house lord is. Benefics more than malefics, certainly. And you will always try to do the best for your spouse. And this is why it is a favourable position. And where do you meet a spouse with this placement? Very often foreign land when you are travelling. Seen this many times. Or in a place of higher education or, or even religious setting sometimes. What is your greatest desire? It's coming from the house opposite the third house. It's a very entrepreneurial position. You want to be free doing your own thing in life, having your own business, most certainly. And therefore, for business people, for business success, it's an extremely fortunate position. Real wealth and success can come when you have seventh lord in this ninth house and your spouse becomes extremely proud of your success. What sustains a relationship? The fourth house away from here is the twelfth house. So sleeping together, being together, being closely intimate together is very important for your relationship. And spiritual pilgrimage, going into ashrams, etc., seeking spiritual wisdom together will sustain the relationship. Now, where is a risk or challenge coming to this relationship? It's coming from the 8th house away, which is the 4th house of home. Sometimes mother can be inimical to the relationship, your mother or the other partner's mother. Sometimes, not always. Definitely, though, buying property together has to be carefully thought out. There could be some issues there. You should always try to be together rather than be apart from each other. If you should have separate properties or something is separating you in the home, this will not sustain this relationship. And here's an interesting thing. Fourth house is your childhood friends. Sometimes a childhood friend can be a threat to the relationship. Now, when a seventh lord's gone into the tenth house, it's quite a challenging position in some ways, but you can still have very long-lasting relationships. Why? Because you work at the relationship. It's the actual house of work and karma. So, hard work in the relationship generally makes it survive. And you seek a spouse who has aspirations, someone who is going somewhere in life, someone who has high status or has the potential to get high status. And you mutually help each other in your careers very often, but it shouldn't become too close. It could be a little bit symbiotic. Sometimes you even work in the same area, same sort of job, or you even meet on the job with this position. In fact, sometimes your careers are so linked together that conflict can come into the relationship. That's the danger of the position. You have to, to give each other enough freedom to do your own thing. Don't meddle in your partner's career or hopefully they won't meddle in your career either. So sometimes you are though literally partners, business partners. So that's a different thing. But as much as you can give yourself creative freedom. Give your spouse freedom. This will help the relationship survive. Now, what protects the marriage when a seventh lord is in the tenth house is the first house. It's your lagna. So you have to take control of this marriage. If your seventh lord is in this tenth house, you have to work at this marriage to make it work. Your effort has to go into it 100%. And your status when it goes up in life is actually good for the marriage. So what's your number one desire? It's the seventh house away the fourth house. You want to have a really beautiful, comfortable home with all the comforts of life. And you want those beautiful vehicles as well. 
cars, luxuries, all of these things are really important to you. And because it's such a good position, you can attain these. You're also very attached to your early home environment, to your country of origin, land of your birth. And you definitely want your relationship to be part of that. What threatens a marriage is coming from the eighth house away. The eighth house is the fifth house. Quite frankly, love affairs from either you or your spouse can threaten the existence of the marriage sometimes. Of course, fifth house is children. Now, children can be excellent. They can get excellent success in life, but they may not always be subservient to you. There can be some problems with them. There can be also disagreements with your spouse about how you deal with your children. So definitely some compromise will be necessary. Having the seventh lord in the eleventh house of your chart can be quite favorable. You can have material gain due to marriage. It's that simple. Now, the 11th house is about society generally. So you have to have a similar outlook about society. Similar political views, social, moral views are very important for this relationship to be happy. The seventh lord in this idealistic house opposing the fifth house of children. Your great desire is to have a family, to have children, which should hopefully be shared with your spouse. And you're a very creative person. So having creative hobbies or creative work in common with your spouse is a great help to the marriage. However, just like the seventh lord, tenth house, this position indicates it. Even though you want to have children and they can be very, very happy people, successful people, they are not always subservient to you, obedient to you early on. So challenges can also come from that. According to Sage Parashara, you are more likely also to have daughters more than sons by this position. Of course, check the D7 and other factors in your birth chart. And where do you meet your potential spouse? Definitely in your network circles, social groups, society groups, political circles even, and even in your workplace. A work colleague could very potentially become your spouse. Could be simply introduced by your friends or even by your elder sister or brother. What protects a marriage here? It's the fourth house away, the house of speech. You must speak together frequently all the time. Be completely open with each other. Do not become close to your spouse. Do not stop talking things out. It's when you talk together that you stay together. And of course, second house is a house of food, eating together, having meals together, cooking together. All of these domestic family factors are excellent to keep this relationship strong. Where is the risk coming to this relationship? It's coming from the eighth house away. That is the sixth house. So, People who work for you domestically or in your workspace, subordinates, can be a risk to your relationship. Or simply people who you do not get on with, people who you have sort of enmity to, they can actually somehow become a risk to your marriage. In business, though, it's extremely successful. Seventh Lord in this 11th house, there's always a new business door opening to you. One door closes, another opens. It's very successful for business people. Now the seventh lord in the twelfth house of your chart. Once again, we have a Dustana placement like seventh lord in the sixth, eighth and twelfth. There's going to be some challenging karmas here. And how will you meet potential spouse? Definitely when you are in foreign lands or simply traveling on the move, even through the Internet, because twelfth house is about Internet connections far and wide. And very often spouse has some foreign cultural input there. They could be from foreign land or from a different culture to yourself. So not locally, that's for sure. In fact, in spite of yourself, even though you may try to meet people locally, people similar to yourself in your environment, you always end up with people far away, people with a different idea of life to yourself, different cultural background. Long distance relationships are extremely common with this placement. Or quite simply, because of this 6-8 relationship here between 7th house and the lord of the 7th house, you can actually find difficulty being together a lot. There can be one of you working abroad, working away, working somewhere else and traveling home again. All of these difficulties and basically separations can occur even in a permanent relationship. You need to be open about finances together. It's a house of loss. So you must be 
be really open with your spouse about what you're doing with with finances between you. There can be a lot of secrets, a lot of manipulation going on. It's very important to be open. There's a fearful factor about telling the truth sometimes when you have seventh Lord in this 12th house. In fact, financial factors become a real deal in this relationship. Very often to begin with, you are very generous giving to your spouse when you first get together. But long term in the relationship, you can become a little more, let's say, slightly miserly about things. You're holding on to things. Very often, though, it's because the spouse themselves spend freely and this makes you fearful. So there isn't agreement about finances and this can be extremely challenging. Worst case scenario, there can be real financial loss here. You may spend a lot just to be with the spouse, maybe traveling, as I say, long distance relationship to be with the spouse. There can be a real upset about finances. Now, just like having the seventh Lord in the eighth house, seventh Lord, twelfth house, spouse can have sickness, spouse can have illness. And this also puts a financial strain and a general difficult strain on the relationship. It's very important, just like the seventh Lord, eighth house, not to have too much secrecy, but there will be secrecy. There's this fearful factor about being open that you have to avoid. What you tend to do, though, is to move around a lot together, going abroad together, holidays all the time, I've even seen. But this can actually be good for the relationship. But what sustains a relationship when Seventh Lord is here? It's four houses away, the third house. This is the active house ruled by Mars or Corica is actually Mars. So exercising together, doing activities together, going for long walks together, keeping fit together. All of this gets you closer together, makes you feel more bonded. And it's a house of siblings as well. So your siblings, your partner's siblings can be supportive of your relationship. But one thing to watch out for, third house is the actual house of sexuality, sex itself. So when you get too much relying on sex to keep you together, to bond you together, it can be dangerous. It can be a completely physical relationship with no depth. Certainly no easy factor for relationships. Sometimes people do not marry when they have seventh Lord in this eighth, twelfth house very often, or they just decide that marriage is just not for them after having been married. You see, what is your real desire? You have to look at this. Your real desire is focused on the sixth house of the chart. Your desire is to purify yourself in this lifetime. Yes, you've come for that spiritual purification. It will uplift you, make you happy. So check the six Lord all houses to find what your weaknesses are, what your shadrapus are. You have come here to correct them. And actually by doing this action, by purifying yourself, a much more suitable spouse often comes into your life. But a sixth house also represents pets, small animals. So your special bond with animals is extremely important. You get great comfort and happiness from them. And even having pets in a relationship can bring you closer together. And where is your threat or risk to your relationship when the seventh Lord is in the twelfth? It's from the seventh house itself, which is eight houses away. The seventh house is the partner. It has to be said, when you have 7th Lord, 12th house, partner holds the reins to the relationship. Partner can ultimately just end the relationship frequently and this is making you feel insecure. You don't feel fully bonded sometimes. Partner seems to have too much power in this relationship. And even more to the point, sometimes you yourself could even start a new relationship while you're in the relationship. It's about dissatisfaction not being openly voiced. And what about business factors? Seventh Lord, Twelfth House is not good for business partnership. Definitely, that is not good. But working for yourself as an entrepreneur in foreign lands, dealing with foreign lands or on the internet is excellent and excellent profit can be there. Indeed, working with fashion clothes is actually mentioned in Sage Parashara's Shastra because of the aspect to the sixth house and because Venus is exalted in this twelfth house. So any business connected to clothing can be super successful.
and you can even make some money and have a business success dealing with people's own distress shown by this sixth placement away here. So you can get success in psychotherapy, counselling, business, mentoring, life coach. All of these things can be successful business. Now, remedies for the seventh house load are very important, everybody. This is important if you have seventh house load in the sixth, eighth or twelfth house, definitely. Or one of your seventh house lords here, you should apply a remedy. But you also need a remedy when you have malefics in the seventh house, like Mars, Saturn, Rahu, Ketu. Or these malefics are sitting with your seventh house lord. Even if he is well placed in a good house, you still need a remedy. And what do you do? It's all to do with Lord Shiva. You see, Lord Shiva is controlling this seventh house. He is the only one who is going to help you to get rid of these afflictions because they go very deep and they are complex karmas. So what you have to do is in the early evening, evening time is seventh house, you must sit somewhere quiet, peaceful and worship Lord Shiva. I will actually post below Shiva mantra for you. The most important actually is the Mitram Jaya Maha mantra. It is very powerful for these deep relationship afflictions. But where you have other cultural religious beliefs, it's still very potent if you pray in the early evening time, asking forgiveness, asking for God to bless you and help you to find the correct relationship situation. Meditation early evening will purify the seventh house of your chart. Check out the other videos on your screen right now for the Lords through all houses. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to sub below. Goodbye for now and God bless everyone.